Packing the court, as the senators decided in the Roosevelt administration, was an idea that would backfire. Uh, and that it was a, a something that might feel good now, put uh, six more justices on the court so that President Roosevelt can have a, a majority on the court. The senators rejected that um, and decided that was not a good thing. I would think that liberals or conservatives and conservatives would not want to start changing the court because if it can happen with one Congress and one president, it can happen with another Congress and another president. And there's been other proposals about limiting the tenure of justices and so forth. So we, we keep hearing about my vision of, of the administrative state and the court and so forth. I have to say that with great respect, I disagree with the characterizations that Neil threw out there. This is not eliminating the Federal Reserve. This is not eliminating administrative agencies. This is not eliminating the federal government. Believe me, the federal government is not going to go away. What this would do would be to tell Congress, don't when you're, when you're legislating in areas of the environment or public safety or the safety of, of food or products, pharmaceuticals, be some, with some specific. Do your job. Take, take some thought about what you're regulating. Don't turn it over to somebody else just so you can vote for something that sounds good. You've got to take some responsibility here. That's what you've been elected for, not to just pass it on to someone else. And with respect to those agencies, this is not the idea with respect to making the, giving the president some authority over the people that he appoints or his predecessor has appointed that is running these administrative agencies. That's the other person. You may not like Donald Trump, and I suspect no one in this room does, and I'm not saying that I'm advocating that, but the president of the United States, who is elected by the people, should take responsibility of the agencies that are part of the executive branch. And the judicial branch shouldn't just say, well, the administrative agency decided that this administrative rule means X, and therefore we won't even think about it. So the, it's, a, it's a matter of abdicating of responsibility by Congress, um, taking away responsibility from the elected president, and abdicating responsibility by the judiciary. That is something that's so revolutionary, so radical, that that is exactly what the Constitution's framers decided. There would be a balance between the president and the legislative branch and the judiciary. If we move a little bit back towards that scheme, uh, instead of dispersing power to unelected people, that would not be a bad thing. And to the extent that a couple of these decisions have to do with state authority and the extent to which states have some powers left in the Constitution, that's also a part of what the framers decided was the right kind of government we should have. So this is not radical. This is what the framers of our Constitution intended our country's government to look like. We have just about one minute so for, for Neil and Joan. Brief closing arguments. Neil, you have been a strong advocate of the possibility of expanding the court if the Democrats take back the White House. Uh, tell us why it would be a good idea and what else you think Democrats should do to resist a, the possibility of a resurrected originalist constitution. I don't necessarily think court packing is a good idea. I just think the Democrats are going to embrace it if these notions are adopted. And look, these are radical. The idea that Congress is going to be specific, well, maybe in the world of Ursula Le Guin or something like that, but Congress is not able to be even general in passing legislation, let alone specific. Think about the myriad of thousands and millions of questions on pollutants or labor or campaigns or whatever. These are all things that have to be done by agencies because Congress can't get together uh, and, and agree with them. And if they, Congress doesn't, if, they, if the Supreme Court accepts his idea of the Constitution, then Congress doesn't, then there is no agency action whatsoever. It's a deregulated state. And even if Ted doesn't, adopt this project. The project ultimately, and you can see it in the work he's doing, is, oh, there's no clause in the Constitution for administrative agencies. That's true. There's no clause in the Constitution for a Federal Reserve either. And there's no clause in the Constitution going back to the Bank of the United States in 1819. But ever since Je Chief Justice Marshall, we've adopted a Constitution that is flexible enough to permit these things. And look, if you don't want to have the agencies, the, if you don't like them, fine. You know, defund them, pass laws in Congress. But don't let the courts do your dirty work for you.